Well, Judge Netburn, I want to continue on this line of questioning. In your court, what matters more, the rights of individuals or your po political ideology? I apply the law to the facts. I, I asked a question, which matters more? Well, my political ideology doesn't matter at all. Okay, so I don't believe you. And I think this case demonstrates that you are willing to subjugate the rights of individuals to satisfy your political ideology. This case involves a male defendant who raped a nine-year-old boy. Was he guilty of that? Yes, the petitioner pled guilty to that. Okay, so he raped a nine-year-old boy. He also raped a 17-year-old girl. Was he guilty of that? He pled guilty, the petitioner pled guilty to that crime as well. So was he guilty? I, I hope so, because she pled guilty to it. Uh, he was a he when he did this. That's correct. And also criminal devi deviant conduct, which the record doesn't, doesn't uh, disclose what that was exactly. Then, after serving in prison, Mr. McLean was released for parole, but then violated the terms of parole by having internet and was sent back to prison. One year after being released again, he was convicted of having child pornography. Is that correct? I'm, I'm unclear on exactly the time frame that you're at, but, but the petitioner was convicted of distributing child pornography. Child pornography that, that was images of adults violently raping children. Abhorrent conduct. Okay. For which there are real victims. And this individual, six foot two, biologically a man, a minute ago you said that when this man decided that he was a she, you, 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 you said this individual was, quote, I wrote it down, sober and entirely a female. That phrase struck me as, as, as remarkable. Did this individual have male genitalia? I think what I said, or at least what it, I... It, that is a verbatim quote, entirely a female. Sorry, what I meant to say was hormonally a female. Okay, but that's not entirely. Did this individual have male genitalia? Yes. So you took a six foot two serial rapist, serial child rapist, with male genitalia, and he said, you know, I'd like to be in a women's prison. And your answer was, that sounds great to me. Let me ask you something. The other women in that prison, do they have any rights? Is, is that a question you're yes, asking me? Yes, the other women in that prison, do they have any rights? Of course. Do they have the right not to have a six foot two man who is a repeat serial rapist put in as their cellmate? Senator Cruz, I considered the facts presented to me and I reached a decision I asked based you a question. on what the law I asked is. you a question. Do they have a right not to have a six foot two man who is a serial rapist put in as their cellmate. Do those women have a right to that? Every person who's incarcerated has the right to be safe in their space. But you didn't think so. You, you didn't think so. And in fact, I'm gonna give some quotes from your order because Senator Kennedy is right. This is not a judge's order. This is a political activist. By the way, the beginning of your order be, uh, says at birth, People are typically assigned a gender. I gotta say that would astonish a lot of Americans. A lot of Americans think you, you, you go to the hospital, a baby is born and you congratulations, you have a little boy, a little girl. The assigned a gender, I know you went to Brown, but it sounds like it's in a college faculty lounge with no bearing on reality. The Bureau of Prison argued what I'm saying right now, that if you put this person in a female prison, there will be a risk of sexual assault to the women. And you know what you did? You said you didn't care about the women. I'm going to quote what you wrote. You wrote, quote, the Bureau of Prisons claim penological interest in protecting female prisoners from sexual violence and trauma. This interest is legitimate. That's kind of you to say. But there are no signs that petitioner is at risk of reoffending. The record is devoid of evidence of incidents of violence or assault during petitioner's incarceration when she was the perpetrator, only the victim. A theoretical risk of sexual assault by the prisoner without more cannot support the BOP's position. No evidence, theoretical. H have you dealt, in what universe is someone who is a serial repeat child rapist not at a risk of reoffending? Senator, as I do in every case. Okay, I know you've been told to repeat the line, I follow the law. I asked a question, in what universe is someone who is a serial repeat child rapist not at risk of reoffending? 
Sir, I looked at the facts that were before me in this case. All of the evidence, including the statements of every warden who had supervised this petitioner. You, you also wrote, the BOP also posits that permitting pet petitioner to live among women will be traumatizing and possibly dangerous to them. This concern is overblown. I have to say, if I were the father of one of those women, and you decided that my daughter's cellmate was going to be a six foot two man who over and over and over again committed violent sexual assault. I would say the entire justice system is absurd and it is clear on your record your political ideology matters a heck of a lot more than the rights of those women that you endangered. I think you're a radical and I think you have no business being a judge. Judge Nettburn, there was um, an opportunity during your exchange with Senator Cruz that you were attempting to offer uh, um, a response relative to uh, the, con the conditions under which um, this uh, petitioner um, were, was unsafe in the facilities uh, in which she was being held. I'd like to offer you the opportunity to finish that response. So the facts that were presented to me and what I relied on to make my decision were that the petitioner had engaged in no violence, no physical violence, no acts of sexual violence whatsoever while in custody. All three wardens who supervised the petitioner requested that she be transferred to a women's facility because of her serious medical needs. In addition, the Bureau of Prisons longtime medical provider testified at a two-day hearing in my courtroom and recommended that the petitioner be transferred because of her serious medical needs. And the last thing I'll say is that the Transgender Executive Council, which is the body that makes decisions on behalf of transgender transfer requests within the Bureau of Prisons, never said that the petitioner could not be transferred and never ever said that she couldn't be transferred because of any risk of violence. What the Transgender Executive Council repeatedly said in denying the request was simply that she needed to maintain her hormone levels. That was the repeated um, justification for the denial of transfer. But the petitioner had reached full female hormone levels before even being incarcerated. At the time, the district judge in Indiana who sentenced the petitioner requested that she be placed in a women's facility. Her hormones were entirely female at that point, and so the decision by the Transgender Executive Council to deny the transfer request based on this idea that it was only because her hormones needed to be consistent and stabilized, I found was a pretext, but they never once said she cannot be transferred because of violence. It was always based on this idea that our hormones had to be... Well, thank you, Judge Nettburn. Senator Padilla, Senator Padilla, that's Senator directly Padilla. contrary to Senator, what you all have that had... Is directly all, no, 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 we're going to no, follow up. There is no follow-up. That's exactly how it works. There is not. That is exactly how it works. Look, we're going to follow up. You didn't get extra time. And she just directly contradicted her own report. I'm just going to read her own words. I just said because it's fair, exactly Madam Chair. the opposite of what she said. Your own report. Senators, Senators I, I gave both of you more time you, to finish your you line of the questioning. Yes, you I allowed the witness to finish her. I allowed the witness to finish her response. I allowed the witness to finish her response. That is, hey, I understand that, that you're is scared not of the I have status chair. Chair. Set, set, Madam Senator Chair. Senator Padilla. You Madam Chair, open thank you, up Madam Chair. she, she has an obligation to explain why she directly contradicted what she wrote in her report. She says in her report, the Bureau of Prisons claimed penological interest is in protecting female prisoners from sexual violence and trauma. She just told you the Bureau of Prisons didn't say there was a concern about sexual violence and trauma. Those are directly contradictory, and why are you contradicting what you wrote in your report? And what are you Senator, trying to hide? I believe Senator I have Padilla. the floor. No, wait, point of order. I believe Senator Padilla. Point of order. Senator, Senator, Senator Padilla. Are, are you going to let her answer that question? Senator you, Padilla. You don't want her to answer that question. Senator You're Padilla. Afraid? Very this much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Senator Padilla. Are you afraid Padilla. of the answer this to that question? This is no cover-up. Are you Padilla. afraid of the answer to that question? Senator Holy Padilla. So yes, you are afraid of the answer to that question. Senator Padilla. Clearly, you're afraid of the answer to that question. 